Does this have the potential to put AT&T and Verizon out of business? Um, well, let's give them a couple years. But, uh, <laughs> so, yes, just not today. <laughs> uh, seriously, though, I'm not joking. I mean, uh, BlackBerry was too big to fail, right? Yeah. What happened? Yeah. Right. So, yes, I will say affirmatively to that question. Uh, if another uh, powerful party, not necessarily a carrier, I mean potentially a platform maker like a Google or an Apple, if they took this technology and they came to New York and they said, look, you take this thing, you will never have a dropped call, you'll always have high-speed broadband. In fact, you don't even need a cable modem coming to your house anymore because your HDTV runs on it. Right. How many people would say no? Okay, Bloomberg has it, Nick Winfield in the New York Times as well. Here's the toy, Steve Perlman, and we're really honored to have you here, the inventor of QuickTime, with John Scully. John, do you have a question for Genius Perlman? Well, I have just an observation because I've been hanging around Silicon Valley for 30 years. Uh, I, I saw the first moonshot when Steve Jobs showed me the prototype of the Mac as the first media computer. This is a genuine moonshot. This is one of those tubes to transistor moments where tubes to transistors. Where, where things yeah. fundamentally it changes all the ground rules for mobile wireless. I, I don't want to get too nerdy, right? But I think we need but to explain will. how it actually works without getting too in the weeds here. Steve, can you help us out? Um, the basic thing is we turn the whole thing around. Since the invention of wireless, I'm talking all the way back to the first things, we've been trying to avoid interference between different people transmitting. So if you take cell phones, I mean, the reason we have cells, you know, it might cover several city blocks. They're all trying to avoid interference, mm -hmm. but everyone's sharing the spectrum within those cells, okay? So what we do is just the opposite. We create interference. And what we figured out a way is to have uh, radio signals coming together, and where they intersect around the antenna of your phone, it synthesizes a cell, a personal cell just for you that's about a centimeter in size. As you move your phone around, the cell follows you. Suppose we've got Times Square, where you can never get service, right? Every person in Times Square can be using Skype or FaceTime It's like a smart connection. They have a private connection. Interesting. It is mobile fiber. But you still need to make the connection here. You still need to take that little cell that's hovering around your antenna mm -hmm. and somehow get it up to a tower and onto a broader network. So you still have to work with, with an existing infrastructure, don't you? Well, so I've done enough companies now to realize that you can come up with the best idea in the world and the large incumbents can go and have something that you're relying upon, you know, that right. they can stop you. So this time around, I said, let's get it right. First of all, we're going to work with, we work with existing LTE phones. Um, if you get an unlocked phone, stick in your SIM card, we'll work with it, okay? Second of all, if they want to give us Spectrum, let us use it groovy. If they don't, we'll use unlicensed Spectrum. They can't stop us there because we get as much stuff in unlicensed as we, as we want to. You have as many people sharing the same Spectrum, all right? And the third thing is, we made it so that it's very inexpensive to deploy infrastructure. We don't need towers. We have what we call serendipitous de deployment. What we, we don't have to have our towers in a certain location, as a cell system does, where they're spread apart. We can put them wherever we want, so we find a cooperative right. landlord. So why wouldn't and, Verizon or AT&T or T-Mobile, or if not all of them, just say, you know what, we like this technology, it's going to improve our service, we will buy them and deploy them within cities so that you get that, that lack of interference. Why would, why would AT&T or Verizon uh, not just automatically want to do that? Um, well, uh, I have my NDA, so I'm not going to say that they haven't, all right? Uh, but what's interesting is what we did is open up the door for non-incumbents to come in there. And right. these guys don't move very fast. I mean, the existing wireless players, the, you know, the, the folks in Silicon Valley. I mean, this is what well, BlackBerry. They couldn't move fast. My observation here with your monumental invention with QuickTime is the physics of antenna is very, very complex. I remember taking it in college, and it was really sport to come up with this. This is a real complexity issue, John Scully, isn't it? Well, it's a complexity issue, but uh, Steve has solved it. He, he has been working on this for 10 years. He self-funded it because he was very successful, made a lot of money in other ventures to, to be able to do that. He has over 100 patents and patent applications all around the world. So this is not a science project. Uh, mm -hmm. He's figured out the complexity of the science, but it's technology right. is ready to deploy. And then, Peter, this brings uh, in your I Washington. Wanna, well, I want to ask you, you, you talk about unlicensed spectrum. Mm -hmm. To what extent do you need government approval for locating these uh, these devices. We don't and do you either. also solve the policy issue of net neutrality here? The oh, you're kidding? Um, we have, if the FCC embraces this and says, hey, you know what? This is a really uh, a public resource spectrum. Thou shalt 
use Spectre officially, thou shalt not have dropped calls in New York City. Anyone uh, disagree with a law like that? Okay. <laughs> okay. If they come back and say that, oh my God, this is like everything this, that the FCC said that they were trying to do with their goals. It'd be the, it'd be the most uh, successful did, FCC administration. Did you, did, better... did, did you just blow up the whole idea of the government spectrum auctions and the raising $20 billion, whatever it, it is they hope money. to raise? You just solved the spectrum issue in and of itself. We have in a way, and we, but there's another thing. Uh, why not have spectrum that instead of being used to frustrate people, I mean, literally, we had a business meeting yesterday where the guy brought an 18 phone and a Verizon phone just so he could talk to a partner. Neither of them worked. He said, can I have a landline? So I said, you know what? You just uh, helped me through half of my presentation. <laughs> I don't need to tell you the reason. If you take the spectrum that's there, you know, that, that they have to auction, right. now we can use it for much more significant things. John, We're talking about opening up a whole new world. It's like the microprocessor. Did the microprocessor, uh, I don't know, ruin the world because it made IBM 360s obsolete? No. Look at where, where it took us. Right. This is that moment. John, so, so one of the things we've seen in technology, Tom, is that the uh, leader who has even a monopoly in a previous era, like let's take uh, Intel and Microsoft did with personal computers, aren't necessarily the leaders in the next uh, Disruptive well, this era. goes to disruptive era. This goes yeah. to Clay Christensen 101. Again, I go to back to what Adam Johnson and Alex said. What has been the response of Verizon and AT&T? Do they in any way want to embrace what you're doing? Um, I can't speak about any of them, any of them specifically, because I have NDAs with all of them at this point. I mean, all the major operators, not just U.S. NDA being non-disclosure. Non-disclosure. Non That's right. right. So I can't talk about. Let me talk about them broadly. Okay, broadly, they love this. All right, and the reason they love this is because they are dying. Uh, a good way to put it, the situation, I mean, um, Low McAdam for Verizon, for example, uh, recently at the end of last year said, you know, we cannot serve the demand that we have in New York, uh, Chicago, mm -hmm. San Francisco, Dallas. We just can't. We've hit a physics limit. Right. So, yeah, we've hit a physics limit in terms of congestion. We can't. Alex, get in one more um, question. One tiny quick question here. When do I get it? When can I um, buy it? Good question. We, That's the smartest question I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> right now, in one block of San Francisco around our lab, there is unlimited LTE capacity. We have more capacity than the rest of the city with all the carriers combined. All I'm right, here, and, and we're growing out from there. Okay. It depends right. on who we partner with and mm -hmm. where they deploy. It can be available as soon as the fourth quarter of 2014. 